Now we've got freelance journalist and the author of the American Doom Newsletter, Justin Glaw. Justin, you have been uh, the authority on this space as far as uh, Georgia state election goes. So the Georgia state election board just approved a rule on Friday requiring counties in the state to hand count the total number of ballots this year. And that would all but ensure that the results aren't finalized in Georgia for days, if not weeks after the election. What's the goal with this move? I think the goal is to create chaos. Um, that's not necessarily, I, I think, how they would describe it, but that's going to end up being the result, um, you know, in the minds of the state election board members who passed, who are responsible for approving this rule, who are pro-Trump election denial activists. Uh, you know, I think they would say that this is going to ensure that there's greater election integrity. Um, but the result uh, with this, as with a lot of things, is that uh, it essentially, uh, you know, will will slow things down. It will uh, open up a window of doubt, and uh, into that window will climb uh, Republicans and election deniers who will say, you know, the irregularities that will result of this, the the miscounts, the potential mishandling of ballots that will result from this rule, uh, all of that will be used to call the election into question by saying that there was fraud. We've actually seen that Trump benefits from delay so that he can go ahead and sow doubt, which Republicans will then fill with disinformation, which is, I think, what you're alluding to. In 2020, uh, Trump told acting attorney general Jeff Rosen, just say the election was corrupt and leave the rest to me and the Republican congressman. Is that is that the practical consequence of what's going to happen here? I mean, it's entirely possible. Uh, and, and the issue of I'm glad you bring that up because the issue of congressional certification has uh, sort of, we've been talking a lot about certification, right? But we've been talking about it in the context of local election officials refusing to certify results. And while that is uh, still a really valid concern, you know, it's probably not going to like actually stop votes from being counted. Um, but but the delays that can uh, come as a result of that uh, that can delay things like governor signing certificates of ascertainment that are then uh, passed on to Congress, uh, who's then responsible for all allocating electoral college votes. So like anything to stymie the process of certification and counting results and saying who won a given state, I think can be used uh, in the congressional certification process as uh, sort of uh, justification or a means to their potential end of denying a Harris win. And, and I'm glad that we are starting now to, uh, you know, talk about that congressional certification process, because really we're, we're in no different of a situation than we were in 2020 when, you know, Congress essentially tried to throw out Harris votes and bring in Trump fake electors and other uh, maneuvers to you know, to get him back into the White House. Well, not to bury the lead here, but will this new rule stand? Yeah, a good question. Um, there will be lawsuits over this rule. Um, the Republican Attorney General of Georgia has essentially already said that this rule uh, is outside the purview and the authority of the Georgia State Election Board, as are most of the things that they've been doing recently. Um, I think he stopped a little bit short of saying that the rule is basically against um, Georgia law. Um, it, it's so, you know, there will be lawsuits over this and they'll be filed by voting rights groups and Democrats and, you know, see what happens in court. Um, the AG is actually the lawyer for uh, the state election board, so he can decline to defend that in court if he so wishes. Um, and, but I think we, we see a little bit of what the powers that be think about this rule and other rules and, and comments that Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger has made recently where I was I was with him at, uh, at an event in Michigan uh, the other day and you know he he brought up concerns about chain of custody issues in regards to this rule which uh, is I think interesting to hear from him right uh, because he's worried about you know, poll workers in a bunch of different counties and a bunch of different polling locations opening up boxes of ballots and inspecting them and counting them. And I, I guess his concern is that, like, that actually opens up the potential for fraud. For the very thing that they purport to be fighting against. 
Exactly. Right, right. And and when I hear somebody like the Secretary of State say, I'm concerned with something like chain of custody, yeah. that's kind of a big, big red flag for me in terms of like, who is handling these ballots? What are they doing with them? Uh, so I, I think that alludes to some of the potential illegalities of this rule that we're going to hear about in, in some court cases. Do you have any reason to believe whether the attorney general would um, refuse to back the Georgia State Election Board in court? Is there any incl- is there any indication that he's given as to whether he supports what they're doing? Well, yes, absolutely. Uh, the, the, he wrote a letter that came out before the meeting yesterday uh, where this rule was passed. And, and he actually, they, they were considering 11 rules yesterday. And he just went down the line and basically for every one of them was like, this is outside of the authority of the SEB. Like, you know, ev- all, all of them were outside the authority of the SEB. And it was really, uh, uh, I mean, I'm trying to use the uh, 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 a coup the word here. And, and it was a smackdown, basically. Yeah, yeah. A lot of things the SEB is doing. And he's basically, it was, it was him drawing a line in the sand that this is not proper. And I am not going to be involved in this, really. And so I, I, I think that's a pretty obvious sign from him. Well, you know, the irony here is that while Republicans beat their chests about accurate vote counts, can you talk about what would happen in terms of the accuracy of the vote count if we're if we're now looking for people to hand count five million ballots? Yeah. So, you know, hand counting and paper ballots, these are like the two you know, big things that the election denial movement really, really wants, okay? And and I'll give you an example of what this looks like. Uh, Spalding County, which has a, a majority of election deniers on their election board, I've written a ton about them over the last four years, but they implemented automatic hand recounts of every single election. So that's, you know, local city council elections, school board stuff, all these different elections that happen every single year. And um, they did this for like uh, two or three elections that occurred. And in the spring, uh, what happened was they eventually found that like they, they, the numbers could never, they could never justify them or, or rectify the numbers, right? Like the numbers that were coming of the results from the machines, the, the tabulators, were never lining up with the numbers from the hand count. Right. So that's me what they found out after implementing automatic hand counts because they're election deniers and they think that that's going to improve integrity is that they could never rectify those numbers because hand counting has so much potential for human error. Yeah. Uh, and so that's a small, and we're talking about small elections, you know, a couple thousand votes, a couple hundred votes that they couldn't get right. So what do you think is going to happen when billions and millions of people vote in November in Georgia and everybody's got to hand count the ballot? Where are these rules coming from? Are, are these rules all being cooked up by these three election deniers on the state election board? Not directly, no. They, in some cases, will uh, volunteer their time to help petition. So if individual citizens you know, petition the board to implement these rules. Um, sometimes the board will say, hey, let's work on this rule together because it's, you know, it's missing this or missing that or it's against the law in some cases but i think what people need to understand about how the seb works is that anyone can propose a rule for them to consider and what has been happening in the last four years especially is that the people proposing the rules are like all from the election denial movement the, the, the rules are not being proposed by county election supervisors or people with the secretary of state's office or or elected members of the georgia state legislature or or any of the people that we would typically think of as being involved in creating policies and rules and laws or or presumably just some people who have a basic understanding of 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 how of how this process works right and 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 that's important not to forget either is that the three people who are allowing these rules to be put in place that are being introduced by the election denial movement had zero experience in election administration. Janelle King was a conservative media personality. Janice Johnson is really just an election denial activist who used right. to just rant and rave at election board meetings. Rick Jeffries is a former state senator who has no election administration experience. So 
the rules are being introduced by, you know, extremists, election deniers. And they used to get thrown out, but now they're getting passed because they can rely on this trio of of uh, uh, pro-Trump election, state election board members. Right now, they're just they they've basically become the vehicles for these for these like crazies out there to to validate all of these claims and and not not only validate them but pass them into 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 existence. Which okay. which I guess raises the obvious question here: Is there any way to hold these Trump-aligned election denialists accountable, or is just is is this just the permanent board for the foreseeable future? Good question. Um, you know, we saw what a week ago, two weeks ago, that essentially the AG Chris Carr sort of balked on, you know, giving Kemp the legal cover to to start proceedings to remove these members. Um, you know, I think that one of the ways that they could be removed, I believe, is that uh, if Georgia Democrats in the state legislature file a formal complaint asking for those ministry of hearings to begin to remove these members. Because these the three members are appointed by Republicans in the state legislature. Um, you know, other than that, uh, there's nothing really that can be done. These are these are political. So the only remedy here is to rely on on state legislative officials in the Georgia state legislature to remove these appointees. I mean, I, I would assume that these people are going to be more sympathetic to the election denialists than not. Right. And that's exactly why they're in the positions that they're in. Right. right. It, the, the, the more moderate Republicans who have served on this board in recent years, uh, including a former federal judge who was appointed by George W. Bush, including two other Republicans, they've lost that. They, they're gone now and they've been replaced by this pro-Trump trio of election denial actives who have been put in place by Republicans in the state legislature for that very reason. Right. right. Like they believe in this stuff. So they put in the true belief. So, yeah, it really the only way. And, you know, folks have made this this point, like the only way to really hold these people accountable is like you need to call in your state legislator who is involved with appointing these people and saying we don't support this stuff or well, potentially try to vote those people out. But that's a difficult prospect in a lot of districts in Georgia that are very bubble. Right. Uh, uh, Justin, where can we read more about this? Uh, you can go to uh, American-Doom.com. It is uh, the home of my weekly newsletter on all things election denialism and crest to democracy and whatever other madness I come across. Well, you have been, again, as I said at the top, a leading voice for all of for everything that's happening in Georgia right now. So thanks for your reporting and thanks for taking the time. Thanks so much. 